Welcome aboard, it's Captain G with Operation Drago 4.2 NATO. Dateline, Western Europe. Tensions in Western Europe continue to rise as the clouds of war hover over the continent. Nations that responded early to the call to arms are finding it increasingly difficult to maintain a high state of readiness indefinitely. Nations that have been calling for demobilization in order to defuse the situation fear the recent airstrikes in Africa and Central America will only provoke the Soviet Union into an attack. Cracks are becoming more visible in the 36-year-old defensive alliance, with France refusing to affirm their commitments under Article 5, Greece and Turkey currently conducting joint operations and military preparedness exercises for the first time ever are in open disagreement over Turkey's plan to eliminate terrorist threat on Cyprus. And all eyes are on the Indo-Pakistan conflict as the possibility of nuclear escalation there is motivating millions to take to the streets in protest over NATO nuclear deterrence. Planning phase, escalation income. So let's quickly revisit our escalation chart here. On the US turn, um, we pointed out that NATO went up to 14 with the transit of the Soviet attack submarine through the Straits of Marmara. And now basic intelligence moves them up to to 16 IPP, and when we check our DEFCON level, DEFCON 3, 16 IPP, if you can see that. So now NATO has reached a higher level of preparedness. What does that mean? That will allow NATO at DEFCON 3 um, not only to move their land, sea, and air forces, but also to actually uh, declare war and attack one minor faction per turn. All right, so that was the escalation increase. Let me pivot you over to technology. So NATO has the same four tech dice and we are rolling two dice for AMD we're on stage three. We'd like to secure that this turn. One dice for long range missiles. We were at stage three. We missed that last time. And one die on chemical warfare. All right. High numbers. All right. We did get 12, that is fantastic. So the five is a fail, but it doesn't matter because we achieved 12 for AMD. We got another 12 for long range missiles and only a seven for chem war and chem war requires an eight. So close, but a fail. So two out of three is excellent <laughs> with the lux that we've, we've been having. So anti-missile defense, moves this up and long range missiles also moves that up so fantastic as your tech chart as of nato all right so let me return your view to southern europe and the mediterranean where most of the action this turn will be all right, so next up is still in the planning phase, purchases. Let me just drop this in the middle of the med so it's on camera. So we walked into this turn with 13 IPP cash on hand. Uh, that's the 12 plus the one that we saved last turn. We are buying two MBTs for four each. That's eight. We're buying a SAM for three, that's 11, and two IPP on another paramilitary, um, more conscripts being called for duty, and one of the nations that wish to be more prepared. 
All right. So next up is combat movement. And let me just take you briefly all the way up here, although I don't know if I can zoom in closely. So I will take uh, a moment. You can see up in um, the Gulf of Sweden, Finland, A-13, there is a British SSN. And we are going to put that, um, that submarine on silent running. And as uh, Flak 88 covered on his last turn, last Soviet turn, that's a combat movement. So we call that combat zero. You can see that. And now we have four combat dice arrayed. One, two, three, four. So combat one is NATO attacking Cyprus, which is a neutral nation that has become overrun by pro-Libyan terrorists. They've created a cell there, and um, it is a mountainous territory. So let me, just for argument's sake, go ahead and place the inherent paramilitary there. Okay. Now, um, this sea zone or this territory that is under attack is mountainous. So we'll have to note the minus one. Hopefully the combat won't be too great. Now remember my marker is there instead of the token. So there's only one paramilitary who will defend at a two. The terrorist cell is destroyed if NATO conquers the territory. Um, he, he's not inv uh, involved in the combat. All right, so the airborne in Marmara, leaving the air base, will go one, two, and drop into the mountains. The fighter in Marmara, one, two. The Djibouti task force, CJTF Djibouti, naval attack bomber, moving one, two, three, four into the sea zone, five onto the island. They'll have two movement left, six and seven, to move to N7, where there will be a landing platform. Okay. Also, from the Sixth Fleet carrier, USS Saratoga, we're dispatching two fighters, naval air fighters, naval fighters. Then they're going to go one, two, three. They'll have two movement as well, four, five, to land on M7, where if the Navy planners have this all planned out correctly, I totally messed up the movement last time, had one of those on-camera brain freezes that those who've done these YouTube wars before can relate, even though you write it down, plan it out ahead of time, just totally freeze. So we're going to avoid that this time. Okay, so all of that after this little paramilitary. So that's attack one. Attack two is in the sands of eastern Algeria, where we're going to send this NATO attack bomber from southern France, one, two, three, Four, and he will return back to southern France after the battle to do a, an airstrike. I'm going to have the NATO um, launch facility that we showed last time, French Guiana, send up another spy sat and task it to support the assault mission. So the bomber will be bombing at full strength. This naval attack bomber, this is regular combat, so it's not an airstrike. Uh, because of the support of the air cav, we're actually invading the island, so he's at full strength. Okay, that's two. Combat three and combat four are both cruise missiles. So, this French cruiser and its escorts, which I'm going to move the whole thing, but I'll leave the carrier. I'm going to move up to here. They're all escorting... The because remember, um, it, well, if you didn't see Operation First Blood, 
cruisers are capital ships, as are carriers, supercarriers, and, and battleships, etc. So for them to do a combat movement, they require an escort in a task force formation. So these um, ships, and I don't know if the sub, I don't think the sub technically qualifies as an escort, so I'll wait till non-combat to move in. So the escorts are escorting the cruiser to move up here because this is where I want the fleet to end. It will fire the cruise missile from this sea zone one, two at the terrorist training camp. And then the major air base in Marmara firing its cruise missile one, two, three, because we achieved long range missiles this turn. Um, we'll also be able to um, hit the other, the east, East Libyan uh, terrorist training camp. So both those are cruise missile strikes. So those are the four attacks, all right? So I think everyone's got that. Let's pivot. And I'd like you to see the battle as well, but you need to see the dice. All right. So hitting Cyprus, I have three fighters. I'll use the white dice as fighters at six or less. I have one attack bomber at seven or less. And I have an airborne who normally attacks at a two. And because he's doing an air attack is at a three, but it's mountainous territory. So as soon as he lands, he's actually only hitting it at a two, I believe is correct. So all of that. And then the defending para, might as well roll it all together. He defends at a two. So the black dice will be the paramilitary defending the terrorists. Okay, everyone see those? We need a miss from the black dice and all will be good with the world. All right, so the paramilitary got an eight. So that was a miss. Now we need a hit with NATO. And the attack bomber got a two. And two of the fighters, probably the U.S. Naval fighters on Sixth Fleet, not the NATO fighter, got hits as well. So, success from NATO's perspective. So, we are going to remove this dice. I've already announced all the movements. I've already done the movement. Con uh, so, this is good. I'm doing it. So, we eliminate that terrorist camp. We wipe out the Cypriots. The very controversial and elite Turkish paramilitary brigade take the island, which is causing a problem with Greece, as we covered at the beginning of the of the turn. But we'll see what happens with NATO. And that's, by the way, I don't want to confuse anyone. That's all fun and flavor. That's not part of the game. That's just me having fun with NATO. All right. Um, so with this desert strike. That is just, that's an airstrike with a uh, satellite. So we'll get rid of all this. We'll keep using, uh, I like using orange for the attack bombers because they're tipped with orange. But I find when I rewatch the turns, it's hard to see and I want you to be able to see it clearly. So this is a seven or less, seven or less because the satellite allows a full strike capability. 11, even with the satellite. <laughs> oh, you can vault. All right, so that was a miss. So the terrorist survives again. That's twice we've missed that terrorist. Now I have two cruise missile strikes hitting east and west Libya. So we'll use, these are five or less. So I'm gonna use east as red and west as I'll just put them east and west, east and west. Can you see those? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So red and purple. We'll roll both those together. Hopefully, we'll get them both. All right, we got one. Red, which was east, got a two. Purple, which was west, got an eight. So turning back to the map, 
the missile fired from Marmara hit its target and wiped out that terrorist strike, terrorist camp. So that's good. That's progress. It's two terrorists that we uh, eliminated this round. And this missile from the French cruiser missed. Or it blew up some sand and terrorists weren't there. But either way, it was ineffective. All right, so non-combat. Let's um, let's RTB that. Okay, so return to base. As we said, this uh, as of yet very ineffective uh, NATO attack bomber coming back from southern France. Flew one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Had a movement of nine with the air base, so good to go and. We'll need to send up another satellite with better targeting. Okay. The in non-combat, these fighters are going to move over to M7 as we discussed with this naval bomber. Now, what are we going to do? Because that's three naval aircraft that have to land here and i've got one on the saratoga so this one is going to air redeploy before the carrier moves up to southern england which is still in camera that's nice so it's going to air redeploy to southern england not to the u.s carrier or the uh, super the nato super carrier up in that season and now this diesel electric and this supercarrier will move into the C zone and we'll conduct flight operations to recover three aircraft for their successful operations. And this is just represents launching point. Okay. Let me grab my list and check. So I did RTBs, I did the air redeploy. I moved the entire battle group from here to here. All right, from Paris, I have two air superiority fighters for NATO. I'm gonna move one of them. I'll leave, uh, I'll, I'll move the Spanish one to Marmara. And Marmara's crown. Oh, and the uh, NATO fighter that will go back to Marmara as well. And then in Spain, in Extremadura, the shipyard, that amphibious assault vessel will embark the two Royal Marines and the air cav, and will travel one, two, three. The Marines and the air cav will disembark onto Marmara, and the amphibious assault ship will take up position with the fleet. Okay, so it's getting really crowded in Marmara. And with the arrival of the British Marines, I am going to move all those forces onto this task card. And I will do that at the end when I do my disposition. You don't need to watch me do that. Um, but I'll do it so Flak 88 can see what I have there because I've augmented it somewhat. Okay. Uh, da -da. So that's it for non-combat move. So now let's do end of turn phase. Place new units. All right. So since we did the purchase units, um, I did add two anti-ship missiles to my build plate while we were doing combat operations over here, and it was a bit of sleight of hand. I did that because with the achievement of long-range missile technology, you get two anti-ship missiles. So the U.S. got uh, long-range missiles at the end of last turn, and they added two to their, to their um, dashboard, and NATO does as well. Other than these two, when you first get the technology, you don't build any until you're at war but you do start with an initial two once you get that technology. So that's on the dashboard. We're going to place the Turkish MBT 
and the third Sam in Marmara. We're going to place the German MBT up in Benelux. And we're going to place this para in Marmara. Okay. So that is all of that. Collect income. So as we said at the beginning, NATO is at 16 IPP. We did not save any. So we will have 16 IPP at the start of next turn, unless we have to start subtracting for the residual terror spaces. But I'm glad to get away from having five on the map again. So we're not at risk of a nuclear suitcase bomb. All right, so collected my income. Uh, this is the end of NATO's turn. Next up will be the Soviet Global Command, FLAC 88. Um, I am going to do a recap of forces, primarily in the Med and, and Marmara um, for FLAC 88. But other than that, this is Captain G over and out. Okay, FLAC 88, let's count Marmara, shall we? We have one MBT that we just built and placed. We have two Royal Marines and one Air Cavalry unit. We have three SAMs. We have two paramilitary. We have two air superiority fighters. We have one NATO Air Force fighter. And we have one US A-10. And then we have four, six mechs. And for those keeping score, two Greek and four Turkish. And we have one artillery. That is Marmara, okay? The NATO fleet, the sixth fleet in the med here. And uh, let me move this task force out of the way. M7 is one diesel electric, two destroyers, one amphibious assault ship, two frigates, one cruiser, one super carrier with two naval fighters and one naval attack bomber. And we're going to reassign that air group. Um, still have the, oh, I forgot to adjust, but oh well. Still have the mech in Lazio. We have returned the attack bomber to southern France. Only one air superiority fighter in Paris now with the strategic bomber. We didn't change anything else here in Europe except in Benelux. We added one MBT to the seven mechs and SAM that are in Benelux. So that is it for NATO. Once more, Captain G, over and out.